On October 9, 2007, North City Development Corporation announced their new $20 billion mega project. Their plan was to build a massive 18 mile or 29 kilometer long bridge from the Horn of Africa in Djibouti to the Arabian Peninsula in Yemen. This new bridge would be referred to as the Bridge of the Horns and would be breaking world records with the longest suspension span ever with a width of 3.1 miles between support structures to accompany the massive ships coming and going through the Red Sea. The current driving time from Djibouti to Yemen is approximately 79 hours, but with this new bridge of the horns, it would only take roughly 18 minutes to get from Africa to Asia. This new bridge from Djibouti to Yemen was projected to carry 100,000 cars a day, which is roughly the same number as the Brooklyn Bridge in New York City. This bridge would also accompany a railway, where a train would hopefully carry 50,000 rail passengers every day. Okay, now you may be thinking, Djibouti and Yemen? You don't typically hear of these countries as having massive herds of people traveling all over like New York City and the Brooklyn Bridge. And you'd be right. Djibouti has just over a million residents, and while Yemen is definitely larger at 32 million residents, their population isn't heavily located along the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. With a cost of 20 billion US dollars, many started asking, is this bridge really needed? Well, Djibouti and Yemen have cleared out lands at both ends of this bridge to create twin cities that will hopefully run completely on renewable energy. The twin cities would be referred to as Al Nur City, and was projected to have a population of 2.5 million residents on the Djibouti side and 4.5 million residents on the Yemen side. An added population of 2.5 million residents to Djibouti would more than triple their current population. Djibouti is in dire need of some economic stimulation given a staggering 64% of Djibouti's population lives on less than 5 US dollars a day. And Yemen is not in a much better economic situation either with 54% of their population living below the poverty line, making Yemen the poorest country in the Middle East. The twin cities of Al Noor would certainly bring many jobs, tourists, and economic growth to two of the poorest countries in the world, but given Djibouti and Yemen's current economic state, how would they be able to pay for this extremely expensive mega project? And not to mention, but does Djibouti and Yemen even have the infrastructure to build a bridge that's this complex? Well, lucky for Djibouti and Yemen, they have a wealthy neighbor to their northeast, Dubai, which is where the developers of the mega project are based. The Al Noor Investment Holding Company in Dubai filed the paperwork to propose phase one for this mega project in 2007. In addition to the Al Noor company, Tariq bin Laden, who is in the same family as deceased Osama bin Laden, is an extremely wealthy resident of Yemen and wants to invest heavily into this mega project. The Al Noor company also wants to construct a highway from Dubai to this massive bridge so that Dubai becomes a more accessible destination. As mentioned in the beginning of this video, the total estimated cost for this bridge is projected to be 20 billion US dollars and this doesn't even include the highway leading back to Dubai. This would break the world record for the most expensive bridge ever built, beating out the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge which was completed in 2018 and stretches 34 miles or 54 kilometers. Another record breaking feat that this bridge would claim would be the insane height of the bridge's piers. The Red Sea is a rather deep sea, where in the strait between Africa and Asia, water depths can reach 330 meters or 1,082 feet deep. Due to this extremely deep water and the massive ships it would need to be able to pass underneath the bridge, it was modeled that the piers of the bridge have to be 800 meters or 2,600 feet in height. Just for context, this is only 100 feet shorter than the literal tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa. The current bridge with the tallest piers is the Golden Gate Bridge with 75 meter long support structures, which makes 800 meter long support structures almost unthinkable. Yemen and Djibouti seemed very eager to start the construction of these bridges, given Yemen had already cleared out 1,500 square kilometers of land for the Yemen side of Al Noor to be built, and Djibouti cleared out 1,000 square kilometers for their side of Al Noor to be constructed. However, in the years following the initial accepted proposal for the bridge, things went rather south. In June of 2010, construction of the Bridge of the Horns was delayed. A man named Mohammed Al Ahmed, who was the chief executive officer of Al Noor Investment Holding Company, this is the company that was in charge of constructing the bridge, stated that he was still waiting on Djibouti and Yemen to agree to sign the paperwork and that they had not signed the framework agreement, which will give us the concession and the right to build the two cities and the bridge. The Al Noor Investment Company gave the framework agreement to both countries in 2009, but internal conflict within the Yemen borders was delaying the process of getting everything signed off. 
However, Al Ahmed expected the countries to both sign off on the build contract for just phase one, which would involve building the link between the Yemen mainland to the island of Param in the Red Sea. And then later phase two would connect Param with Djibouti. Al Ahmed remained confident in this project happening, stating Al Noor has already invested an undisclosed amount of money in the scheme and I'm optimistic that with the current finances, we will be able to completely fund the entire project. Well, things in Yemen didn't get much better, and eventually on September 16th, 2014, Yemen broke out into a full civil war where the Shiite rebels, with links to Iran, took control of Yemen's capital and largest city, demanding a new government. As you could imagine, a country in a civil war isn't very likely to sign off on a $20 billion mega project contract. Not to mention, now there isn't even a true legitimate government of Yemen with the attempted overthrow by the Shiites. Would the Shiites sign off on this deal, or would it be the Yemen establishment? To make matters worse, Djibouti also didn't want to be connected to the disaster that was unfolding in Yemen, given Djibouti already faces many problems of its own. Other countries also started becoming skeptical of the bridge at this time because of the fact that this bridge would be going over one of the most important shipping routes in the world. The Red Sea and the Suez Canal are the only ways that ships can pass from the Indian Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea without having to travel all the way below Africa. In an unfortunate scenario where the bridge somehow blocks the waterway, this would become disastrous for global trade. Just two years ago, from March 23rd to the 29th in 2021, the Suez Canal was blocked by a massive cargo ship that had its bow and stern stuck into the sand due to some harsh winds. Given 12% of global trade runs through the Red Sea and the Suez Canal, this cost the global economy $9.6 billion in lost revenue. Now imagine if the Bridge of the Horns were to be constructed, and then some major catastrophe occurs where the bridge ends up in the water and ships aren't able to pass through. Instead of just getting a cargo ship unstuck from a canal, now you're having to remove large pieces of a bridge from rather treacherous waters. Not to mention, this Horn of the Africa region is where the modern day pirates dominate much of the waters, making for an even more dangerous trek. These countries didn't have to worry too hard though, because Yemen remained in their civil war all the way up until 2022, until the United Nations finally declared a ceasefire. At this point, at the time of making this video in 2023, talks of the legendary Bridge of the Horns seemed to be completely dead. If the construction of this bridge were to happen in the future, they'd be building one of the world's longest bridges in extreme heat, given they wouldn't be far from the world's literal hottest town. In Djibouti's neighboring country of Ethiopia, a small village called Ahmad Eya is known to be the world's literal hottest town. It is truly remarkable how the residents of Ahmad Eya are able to survive in a place that reaches temperatures of 130 degrees Fahrenheit, and you can learn more about this place in this video right here.